afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks for coming. My name is Vaca Alessa, and today I'll be presenting about the four-day workflow. The first thing that I'd like to go over is why a four-day workflow. And we discussed this in previous classes. We heard about it throughout the whole semester. But the first question I'd like to ask you all is, who would want a four-day work week? I was wondering, I don't yeah? Sorry. You don't want a four-day work week? Why would you want a four-day work week? I think maybe depending, I would probably not choose a four day work week. When you say that you were more concerned regarding, let's say, if you work 10 hours from Monday to Thursday and then you don't have a Friday, for instance, or you're thinking about also, let's say, you work six hours from Monday to Friday, would that be something that interests more focus on the hours instead of the four days itself? Yeah, because I feel like it does depends on the people. Okay. Because like some people can go for like 10 hours straight. So it's only like 10 work for 10 hours in a day, but then others can't do that. Okay. So I feel like it depends. Makes sense. Uh, do we have anyone in Zoom? Uh, Eli, I remember you uh, raised your hand. Yeah, um, I was just gonna say like, ever since I got to Holt, I was given like four day work, work week because we don't have classes on Friday. Okay. So ever since then I've like kept it um, to that and it's honestly really helpful because I'm able to keep my uh, school work within like the four days and then do whatever I want for the other three days. And if like, I have full, like, I have the full day Friday to do as much work as I want to do. Awesome. Like, awesome. This does relate a lot to what we have been seeing and also the research that I'm going to talk about a little bit later on the presentation. Uh, I see that Felix has a point in Zoom. Uh, you can unmute it. Uh, I'm here to say it. I um, um, so I was wondering, so how would you set it up? Would you set it up that every person was from Monday to Thursday or from Tuesday to Friday, or that people can choose the four days in which they would work? Because I think that would make a big difference, right? For them to schedule meetings and, um, or like updates or any, like that would kind of make it hard, right? If people have different weeks. Awesome, uh, thank you for the point. It does make sense to have that concern. And this would vary from uh, company to company. We do have some companies that have already proven to have successful results, and it really depends on how they schedule and even the industry that they work. For instance, we are talking about the financial industry. We have the market open hours, and we also have on the health industry, which you have demand for, let's say, a 24 seven service that you would have to attend those hours. So it will really depend on industry for industry. But, oh, uh, one, you have a point? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, no you're wrong. Yeah, because I, I just want to ask, like, the, like, different, uh, what, what type of uh, company that you just have? Because some, some companies, they have uh, intense working memory, so maybe they like number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for four days, are not enough for them. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Thank you. So, following to what we discussed right now, and thank you for the points. I would like to dive into the academic research I was able to find. And the first thing I would like to mention is a study did by a company called Autonomy and also the research institution, Aula. This is back in Iceland. And they did a study in Iceland with uh, 2,500 workers on the workforce. And this is over 1% of the total workforce in Iceland, which is huge and represents a good amount of their working population when it comes to a large study. And they discovered a overwhelming success with the people that implemented this four-day work week. What they did is that throughout 2017 to 2019 in this study, they had the working population that was selected for the study to have a reduction on the hours for week work 
from 40 hours a week, the normal standard that we are all used to it, to 34 to 35. And the results from that was that everyone, mostly in the research, they proposed and also showed an increase in productivity, well-being, and also in less burnout throughout the week. So we had really positive results in Iceland. Following to that, 86% of the population, after the study was done in the working population, adopt the four-day week in Iceland. So it showed to be a good result and a successful experiment. Something I would like to add is the UK's Atom Bank. So in the private uh, sector of the industry, we have UK's Atom Bank, Unilever New Zealand, and Microsoft Japan that also adopt the four-day work week and had stunning results. Microsoft Japan itself recorded a 40% increase in their productivity since they implemented the four-day work week. And this is a practical example of companies that already adopted and are being successful. Another thing we'd like to mention is the congressman, Mark Takano, that we previously talked a little bit in class, and he is introducing the bill for a 32-hour work week. And as your point one uh, related, it doesn't necessarily uh, have to do with the four established days, but with the hours. In this bill, for all the work that is done after 32 hours of work is gonna be considered overtime. So the threshold is not gonna be 40 hours as it is right now, it will turn to 32 hours. And 32 hours can be seen as four days a week, for instance, Monday through Thursday. And this will make employer, uh, employees and the people in the workforce to be able to have their work throughout the week and also be more productive, have less of a burnout, and be able to balance their work balance with their life balance. Following to that, it's important to mention that a uh, study done by Gallup uh, concluded that employees with a four-day work week rate their lives overall uh, better. And I would like to mention uh, and show you guys this graph and walk through a little bit. We have the engagement and well-being and burnout by number of days work. And in this study conducted by Gallup among the US employees who were 34, 35 hours per week or more, shows that, as we see on the right-hand side, the typical worker for four days, five days, and six days, and then we have the questionnaires for engaged, actively disengaged, thriving well-being, and few burnout often always. As you can see, the engaged percentage is similar when it comes for the four days, five days, and six days. However, you can see that the four days is on top. When it comes for the actively disengaged, this is the main argument against the proposal of the four day work week. Because it has been shown that the workers in the four uh, day work week are more actively disengaged than the workers in the five day work week or six day work week. However, the goal of this strategy comes into the thriving well being. And this will be a difference of 63% to a 57 and a 56% to the workers compared from the four day work week to the five and the fifth. And then the feeling of burnout, as Beatrice mentioned before, and also is confirmed by the study, the workers that have worked on four days, to five days, and six days, we can see that the workers on four days are less of a burnout, and they're able to be more productive throughout their whole week. Following to this, let's go over the potential risks. And we can see that shorter work weeks show a higher percentage of digital engaged employees, as we just seen in the study. However, when it comes to employees of household problems, and retirees, they might find purpose and stimulation in social connection in work. It might be their purpose to be at work, or it might be their thing that makes them excited about the week, because they're going to work, they're going to do something that they like to do. And to tackle that, we came up with make the fifth day an extra optional. As the bill that uh, is being introduced by Mark Takano in California, we would have after the 32 hours, so after the four days of the work week, we we'll make it overtime. And for the ones that want to work more, they have the chance to, but for the overall population, they wouldn't need to go this extra work that is more of a consuming their week and making them be there at the workplace already burned out and not necessarily being productive to considering a better life balance and work balance. Onto this, 
The way to measure it would be to have a four times a year survey in which, similar to the Gallup study, uh, survey employees in feeling engaged, actively disengaged, thriving well-being, and feeling burned out, often or always. And we'll measure them and see the results just as Gallup did in their study. Then, in order to conclude, we have the following argument that we saw success in Iceland with the public and private sector with 2.5 thousand workers, over 1% of the working population, achieving good results in increasing productivity and well-being in the workplace by following a four-day work week. We also saw a success in the private sector with Atom Bank on UK, Microsoft Japan, and Unilever in New Zealand showing good results and increasing their productivity and well-being following the four-day work week. And we also see the congressman in California, Mark Takano, with his view to make overtime compensation for any hours worth over 32 hours. Then, we might conclude that the four-day work week may increase employee well-being and productivity if you follow in the workplace. Thank you. <laughs> any last questions? No one? Can you go back to the potential risk? Yes. Why is the five-day extra optional a potential risk? When uh, we talk about the five-day being extra or optional, it's similar to the legislation that Mark Connor is trying to uh, have processed. And when he has a five-day, it would be, let's say, the Friday, over the 32 hours, so optional. You wouldn't be uh, expected for you, just as in the Atom Bank in UK, the CEO, uh, published that ex employers are not expected to be there on Fridays or Mondays because they take the day off, let's say. It's over the 32 hours, it's over the four days. So the fifth day is optional. If you wanna overwork, if you wanna work overtime, you're able to, just like we are able to do it so today. However, you wouldn't be the standard and people would be compensated as they are compensated today with working five days. However, they will be able to have a better work balance. Does that answer the question? But that wouldn't work in like America because like people that have the five day work week they want an extra day which is like Saturday so they work sick days because like from what I saw from like research people in America uh, the workers in America prefer having a five day work week than a four day because they're working by the hours but that's so, like the thing. if I have by working six days they can earn more which but that's the thing the people that work uh, after five days in US today, they work over time and they're able to earn more, as you said. That's why the Congress uh, view that uh, the politician Mark Cassano is trying to pass in California, is trying to make the threshold from 40 hours, which is the regular work week that we have, to 32. So everyone that works past those 32 hours, past the four days, are gonna be making more. So you bring the standard, compensate more the workers, and they're able to be more productive within the four, uh, the four days of the week. Because on the fifth day, as just as we said, you're pretty much blacking up. You're not necessarily doing a great job. Yeah. And that's time. Thanks, guys.